and so good afternoon everyone and welcome to this webinar series so uh, so i'm a phd student at upsala university and i work mostly with pulmonary drug delivery mostly trying to study the mechanics of adhesive units i'll come back to that in detail uh, but so the way we'll structure this talk is uh, as you have all read the topic so first i'll go and okay. i'll give you an overview of like uh, in this webinar series you've heard a lot of uh, talks on molecular dynamic simulations but i'll be using a slightly different similar but yet different technique known as discrete element method so i'll tell you what discrete element method is what's the comparison between uh, discrete element method or dem and molecular dynamics what are the diverse applications in general and within pharmaceutics. Then I'll give you a case study of my PhD project of how I'm using discrete element method as a tool. So let's start. So, so broadly speaking, discrete element method is a numerical technique that calculates the interaction between a large number of particles, which is same also for MD, but what different in this case is it is, does not assume any constitutive model. So what it does is it uses a force displacement relation and it accounts for the interactions in the assembly. And DEM is really good when it comes to mesoscale particle motions or when you have discontinuous discontinuity in your domain. So discrete element method really kicks in into that picture. So having understood, so like I said vaguely in that, so how does it work? So if you have two particles, so they undergo collision, and when there's a collision detected, so we find an overlap in between them, as you see here. So based on the overlap and the collision between the two particles, different contact forces are calculated, and the different contact forces could be governed by the contact interactions between them. For example, if you have adhesive structures, it could be adhesive forces, it could be different, like if it's a rigid structure, it could be just bouncing off from each other. So depending on a particle and a wall interaction. So depending upon that, all the contact forces are calculated. And then we have an update of the velocity and the position. So if you look, if you ask me, what is the major difference between a DEM and an MD? So in MD, we assume that the particles are mass points. So we cannot assign a rolling moment, a normal force the tangential force, a rolling moment or, or a traditional moment to it. Whereas in DEM, they have a defined radius. So because they have a defined radius, a certain so a certain normal force could be assigned. And depend, if they're sliding on the top of each other, we can have a tangential force. They can roll on each other, or if they twist, you can have a traditional moment. So the angle behavior is something which is not by default there. It could be be introduced depending upon the model, but the displacement behavior is we would find in all DEM codes. So let's go into a bit, uh, see what is the difference. So um, in most molecular dynamic simulations, energy is conserved. I'm using most because there could be MD simulations where you don't conserve energy. In DEM simulations, usually the energy is dissipated. For example, if you're studying friction, so in that case, due to the frictional interaction, the energy is dissipated. In most interactions in MD, they, uh, the interactions are governed by state functions, whereas the many interactions in DE are more or less history dependent. Like as I already mentioned, the shape, size, and the rotational degree of freedom is an additional boon in DE over MD. And as we've been talking about, MD is modeling in atomic scale, whereas DEM is mostly mesoscale and more discontinu discontinuous materials. So like with every method, there are always disadvantages. I've been saying, okay, what is how D DEM is better than MD, but of course there are disadvantages with it. So it's computationally more expensive because only a small region can be simulated in a reasonable time. And the effects of size distribution and shape distribution on a macro scale are uncalibrated. So a lot of times we would uh, need like same, same as DEM that, okay, so 
as MD requires inputs from the experiments, DEM would also require inputs from the experiments. Like for example, if I'm studying the interaction between two spheres due to adhesive contact, I would need to give it an input of the surface energy. So surface energy is nothing but the interaction, the net van der Waals force. So those have to be measured through empirical numerical experiments. And based on that, we get a certain output that predicts us, that has to be consistent with the physical laws of the universe. And the scaling could be a bit tricky depending upon how it is. Okay, so what are the potentials of DEM? So the potential of DEM, it's a very, like as I said, it's a very robust tool. You can study like agglomerate microstructures, you use, if there's an agglomerate of small particles, you can see how the agglomerates fracture. Or for example, in this case, if you can do bigger simulations like flow of particles within uh, a simulation. So you can easily couple particles with fluid dynamics and things like that. And giving you a particular example in pharmaceutics is for example, tablet compaction. So in tablet compaction, if you're making mixing different components together and then you're compressing, depending upon how much you're mixing, you can look into the distribution of it. And also you can look into how the different compressibility parameters changes, like the Kawakita parameter, for example. So if you see the figure on the right, uh, it shows a comparison between a DEM and an experimental results. Uh, so if you see they quite well agree when it comes to Kawakita or these larger scale simulations. So before I go into the case study, I'll just revisit what I said. What we're using here is discrete element method or DEM. It's a numerical technique used to study large mesoscale simulations. They're slightly different from MD simulations, but they're still similar. DEM is a dissipative uh, numerical simulation so energy is lost. And it's mostly very good for systems which have discontinuity in them and, and not so good for atomic scale because, yeah. So there's no concept uh, like, uh, like in MD normally we talk about uh, universal force that is is applied to all the particles. But here they're mostly governed by a particle-particle interaction. And depending upon how the pair interactions happen, that entire system can evolve from there. Now, having had a basic understanding of what DEM is, I would like to put forth my PhD project, so which is uh, adhesive unit modeling and simulation as a case study of DEM. So, lot of jargons being thrown at you. So let's let's go one by one. So what is an adhesive mixture? So adhesive mixtures are ordered units used in dry powder inhalers. So there are different kinds of inhalers. I'll just go into a bit basic first. So different kinds of inhalers. So, you, so you must have seen like PMDIs or meter dose inhaler, which is based on spray system. So in that case, it's more liquid based. So here, pressurized liquid base. So in this case, it's a different system where we are using dry powders. So in order for the small drug particles to reach the deep lungs, they should be in the order of three to five micrometers. But the problem with going down to three to five micrometers is they become really adhesive in nature. So they tend to agglomerate. As they agglomerate, they tend to form bigger lumps, which are of much higher orders of magnitude. If it's a higher order of magnitude, it will tend to stick in either the throat or the upper airways, and the drug won't be able to reach the point of action. So in order to do what, what we do is we, we micronize the drug particles and we consider bigger lactose particles, which are known as carrier particles. So usually the carrier particles are in the order of 100 micrometers. So onto the carrier particles, there are smaller drug particles attached, forming an ordered mixture. So that is what is known as an adhesive unit or the mixture known as an adhesive mixture. And what does this carrier do? 
So the carriers help prevent drug agglomeration and improve the disposability of these uh, drugs when they're released from the device. Later, I'll come in. So if below you'll see a SEM image. So the bigger particle is a carrier particles, which is usually a lactose or a mannitol sometimes, and onto that there are smaller drug particles attached. Later, I'll show you a, a simulation of how it looks. It will become more clear. But for now, you can just imagine it as a bigger particles with smaller particles attached to it. So going further, so in order to simulate, like as we saw with DEM, what is the approach we need? So the approach is we need to identify the relevant mathematical models. We need to use a combination of different computational tools and look into the physical consistency of the results and at some point try to see if there are experiments which can be done to compare. The tricky part with experimentation and with micro models is we're dealing with a uh, hundred micrometer. So it's very difficult to isolate a hundred micrometer unit and, and, and do experiments. So it's much easier when we scale it up to macro scale. So I'll try to address the problem. Like as I said, what is the adhesive unit? So when you talk about adhesive units, it could be, okay, are we talking about the units inside the lungs? Are you talking it about inside the inhaler? Where exactly are we talking about? So if you look at the entire flow, there's formulation, there's handling. So what is handling? Handling is packaging it into different capsules before it's put into an inhaler and then dispersed and then deposits inside a lung. So what I'm really looking at is the handling. So the problem is when we have, uh, when you're filling it into a capsule or any canister, which would later administer the dose. So it ha so what we use is like a funnel shaped structure and due to the adhesive nature of these mixtures, they tend to agglomerate. So due to the agglomeration, they can end up forming a bridge they might stick onto the surface or the carriers might stick and the drug might go through leading to segregation at this step and later agglomeration within the capsule. So what this would lead to is this would lead to lowering, lowering the efficiency during the drug administration. So in order to study this, we develop a micromechanical model to study the stability and mechanical behavior in the handling regime. And we're also interested in studying higher drug loads. So we'll be changing the dense number of part particles covering the carrier and the surface energy. A lot of words, too confusing, but each of the red words will come back to in detail and see what it means. Okay, let's start. So as you said, like micromechanical models. So what is a micromechanical models and what are the different kinds we can administer. So as you see here, each of these units is a in silico created adhesive unit with the carrier particle as the represented as gray and the drug particles on its surface represented with the cyan color and they would undergo collision. So what are the things that would, the collision would depend upon? So the first micro mechanical model is we're trying to undergo collision at different velocities to study what the restitution coefficient would be, how the mechanical properties change. Second, what is the, now we have considered, the first one we consider the effect of spherical carrier and the spherical fines. Uh, we, we wanted to see what is the effect of spherical fines because there have already been some studies with respect to spherical, non-spherical carriers, but more in a dispersion phase. Then we wanted to say what is the effect of changing of carrier sizes. So. Yeah. Sorry for that. Effect of changing carrier sizes and effect what is the effective friction for the adhesive units? Because when you have two adhesive units, it can get really complicated. Sometimes you might see a behavior which is similar to a gecko. So when a, uh, so if you've seen house lizards or geckos which climb on the walls, so they have these pads which 
when, when the push against it, they are of the, the small fangs in the pads is in the order of 20 to 25 micrometers. And the way they stick onto the wall, it's something known as stick and slip behavior. So the units can end up showing something very similar to that because of the recent nature. So a lot of insight we can get just through simulation and in parallel how it behaves in nature. Okay, now going one by one. So what are the mechanical properties we are considering? Restitution. So for restitution, just imagine you're having a ball and you drop the ball on the ground and it will bounce back. So what it's saying is the ratio of the velocity of the ball after bouncing off and before bouncing off. So in a way, you can also talk about it as how much energy has is, does it still has in the system. And as it's an undergoing collision, there are always transfer between the two units. There is there are some particles which should stay and there would be some particles which should be lost. So we are interested mostly in the loss ratio because we don't want the particles to be lost before it's administered. So we'll be looking at stability ratios and then we'll be looking at the model which we'd be using is known as Hertz Mendeley with JKR model. So what did what to put it in simpler terms is if you have two uh, particles and they come in contact, they'll come in contact at this point because of the small particle size, there is an additional surface energy which comes into picture. So what is surface energy is a net van der Waals force. And this net surface energy can be explained with two different models. One is a JKR model and the other is a DMT model, depending upon the particle sizes. So in this case, we'll be using a JKR model. So having done that, the first thing we did was we tried to create a adhesive units in silico. So what we did was we took a carrier particle and then we took drug particles. We pseudo randomized the drug particles on the surface of the carrier particles, gave it random velocities, and then when it has randomized, we gave it an initial central velocity. So as to form an adhesive units. So based on the number of the drug particles which is attached, we define something known as the surface coverage ratio or SCR. So based on that, we define three surface coverage ratio. So it's the SCR 0.5, or you can, you can say it as a 50% drug coverage ratio, SCR of 0.7 or 70% and SCR of one. Along with this, we considered three, five different surface energy of interactions. And all of this was done for a up 15 small velocity ranges. So for each study, a total of close to 500, 550 simulations were done. And then we did a statistical analysis of it. So just to show what we studied. So we studied the interaction at different velocities. So for the first was we, we changed a parametric study of input velocity. So if you see uh, in this case, it has for the exactly same two particle systems, a particle pairs with the same surface coverage ratio and the same surface energy, but with different velocities, they undergo different losses. And then we parameterize surface energy and surface coverage ratio. So to give you a brief, so this is what we got for SCR of 0 0.5. So what does it show us? So our idea was to see, okay, can we fit a model into it first? Because this is a micro model. So the aim is to try and fit a analytical equation if we can, and then try to extract parameters from the analytical equation and see if we can use it to for a macroscopic model. So if you see there are error bars and there are variations. So what we did is like, as you remember, we did a pseudo randomization of the drug particles. Based on the, the how we pseudo randomize it, the values can change. So what we did is we took three pseudo randomized value for each. And based on that, we plotted different uh, graphs. So, and what we tried to do is we tried to fit like a equation which is similar to Kawakita model, which tells, and uh, so, and it, if you see there are different interactions. So what we observe is 
if you're increasing the surf, like, okay, so this is for SCR of 0 0.5. For a trans, for if you're increasing the surface energy of interaction, the particles tend to stick more. But if you're decreasing the surface energy of interaction, there are higher losses for a 0 0.5. But what would happen if I if you do it the other way around for 0 0.7 and 0 0.1? So as we saw, okay, it's a good thing that if you're increasing the surface energy and surface coverage ratio, that they tend to be more stable. But at the same time, if you see in this graph at the starting velocity, that shifts significantly. Significantly. So what that means is they tend to form larger agglomerates, which might be more difficult to remove during the dispersion. So the overall idea is that we cannot go to either extremes. And based on that, you can try and plot a graph. So if you are interested in looking into the graph in detail, you can look at the uh, paper. So if you plot a graph, you can see the range in which it is most stable. So this was the first study where we were studying the mechanical properties based on the restitution coefficient. So having studied that, what we were interested in is uh, uh, looking into the effect of changing the shape of fine particles. In order to better analyze, what we did is we took three different uh, fine shapes, or fines in this case is the drug or an API. One was a spherical, a tetrahedron, and a pentagon so that we can change the different tetrahedral ang dihedral angles and these dihedral angles would and how these affect the total surface also each for each of these the fines the net diameter of the fines was kept constant so the maximum diameter length was the same so if you see that what the obvious assumption would be, okay, in case of a tetrahedron, there are more spheres, so there would be more area of contact with the carrier particle. For spherical, it's a single point, and so on and so forth for a pentagon. But having done that, what we see is uh, the effect of API is observed at the point of contact. And in this case, the results are vary quite a lot. So what we wanted to say is how does the API redistribution happens on the surface of the carrier. So in order to do that, what we said is we plotted a normalized shift and the normalized dispersion. So in this case, the B, the C figures are the normalized, the mean shift. So what is the mean shift? So we took a small string of particles around the carrier and we saw how that moved during the collision if it has moved around so just imagine a bead sitting at the tip of the carrier and during the collision how that bead is moving on the surface so we, we wanted to see that and we also wanted to see how the net dispersibility of the thin strip happened so we tried it for like we did the same thing we just in this case we did not do a parametric study of the surface energy, but whereas a parametric study of this shape and the surface coverage. So what we observed is at the point of contact due to the particle, the particle interlockings are different when it comes to different shape of particles. Whereas as we go further down in the surface coverage ratio, we don't really see any major difference. So we started wondering why is it so? So what we did is we tried to see how the force chains behaved as we go from one, uh, go through different number densities. So in a spherical particle, the force chains are, more, there are more smaller number of force chains for a lower surface density for both spherical, pentagonal and tetrahedron. And as we're increasing the number density, the force chain in the interlocking, it's not the interlocking, but there are, the network size increases. As the network size is increasing, it makes it more difficult for it to move around because there's less space to move around. And because we are doing the collision at a very low velocity regime, it's not high enough to disperse the particles whereas it's enough to only rearrange. So as you're going, increasing the number density, so we tend to see less and less of effect of the particle shape. 
So having studied, so this was the second micromechanical model which we established and tried to see how it behaves. So having studied the mechanical properties during collision and the effect of the drug shapes, we wanted to see what is the effect of the carrier size. So uh, I'll, in this case, I've just summarized the results what we got. We took three different carrier sizes of 50 micrometer, 100 micrometer, and 200 micrometer. We increased the size of the carrier particle. We observed that the increasing the size of the carrier particle leads to a stability for spherical particles. Whereas decreasing the size of uh, carrier particles leads to more cohesiveness and it makes it more difficult for the flow dynamics. So in line with what has been already observed with, through different experiments, we saw that through simulations as well, an optimal size of a carrier particles is ideal for dispersion and, and, and to achieve the maximum flowability and the efficiency of the DPI. If you make it too small, they will stick together. If you too make it too big, they will lose the fines. So that was the effect of the carrier particle. We did an energy analysis in this to see how, why this happened, that with this larger particle, the net energy changes as a result of which that redistribution factor changes. So after having done the effect of changing the carrier size, uh, this is something which I'm still working on. We are start, like as I mentioned in the beginning, we are trying to study friction models. So in friction model, what you are doing is we are fixing one of the particles and moving the other part, the right particle in a fixed plane, and then we are trying to give it a constant velocity and see how the friction friction changes. And it's pretty interesting. I, we don't really have quantitative results, but qualitatively it looks like a, a gecko climbing on a wall. So there have been some papers where they studied, uh, they tried to remodel the gecko feet with uh, uh, like a, and tried to study how the density of the different flanges in the gecko feet can lead to the different sticks and slip condition. So, and these things are very difficult to observe if you're doing experimentally because taking a single adhesive units and pushing it across it's, is very difficult. You're dealing in hundreds of micrometers. So it's really fun to see how, how much detail we can see just through trying to model it. Yeah, it's of course at the end of the day, we need experimental validation and it needs certain inputs from the experiment. But yeah, but that is really fun thing, which I'm currently working on. So to summarize, uh, what we did, what they did was DM is a numerical technique useful for simulating mesoscale simulation. Uh, as a case study of DEM, we studied the adhesive units and we developed three micro models and we are still working on micro models. And this is giving us a more insight into the powder flowability. And based on that, we plan to develop more, combine all of them to develop a macro model and do a large scale experimental validation. And with that, I would like to thank my supervisor, Yoran Prenning and Kirit Alberi and the group pharmaceutics group in the department of pharmacy thank you